ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರುತಿಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಆಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲಯ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವಂ ಪಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷ್ಯಕೃತ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತೋ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಈಶ್ವರೋ ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೇತಿ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ಭೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿನೇ ವ್ಯೋಮವದ್ಯಾಪ್ತ ದೇಹಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣ ಮೂರ್ತಯೇ ನಮಃ ಟುಡೇ ಸ್ಪೂಜಿ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆರಾಧನಾ ಡೇ ಸೊ ಆಸ್ ಅ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಟು ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಟು ಶೋ ಅವರ್ ಒಬೀಡಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಒಬೀಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ವಿ ಶಾಲ್ ಟುಡೇ ಟೇಕ್ ಅಪ್ ಫೈವ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಆನ್ ಎ ಸಾಧೂಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ a set of verses composed by adi shankaracharya under the name kaupina panchakam panchakam means five verses kaupinam is loin cloth the cloth that one wears as an underwear that is called kaupinam kaupina panchakam the five verses on kaupinam actually it's not five verses on kaupinam kaupinavantaha is what is being spoken about the one who is wearing a kaupinam so let's start with the first verse vedanta vakyeshu sadaramantaha vikshanna matre na jatushtimantaha visokamanta karane charantaha kaupinavantak kalubhagyavantaha so all these five verses End with a line, Kaupinavantah Kalu Bhagyavantha. The one who is wearing a Kaupina or a loin cloth is the blessed one. Very interesting. People think, oh, then we can't wear a Tantex or any of these underwear, so we should go for only loin cloth. In fact, there has been people who... used to talk like this i have read books where it is written that you know a person has to only wear a loin cloth and because shankaracharya says you know the one who wears that only is uh, the bhagyavan and if you don't wear uh, kaupina it's that's not the intent it's uh, like puja swami says kaupina vanta antaha kikalu bhagyavantaha so even if a person is wearing only a loin cloth not anything more than that he doesn't have any other possessions he or she doesn't have any other you know lucrative dresses or a house or a shelter or a car or you know so much of wealth all they have is this one line cloth still they are blessed so that is the context of this whole thing so that's why this gopina vanchanam attains a significance because it starts off with a great promise saying bus you don't need to have anything all you just even if you just have a loin cloth you are still blessed right but then I mean, just because somebody has only a loin cloth doesn't make the person blessed right so they should have something else if not in terms of assets what is it something else which makes one a blessed person despite not having any wealth or any belongings is is what is addressed in these verses so essentially it is describing what is a sadhu's life a sadhu or a sanyasi the one who has a renunciate right one who renunciate as in mentally as renounced renounced right it's not necessary that a person so if a person can be blessed with just kaupina the same person can be blessed even with some more dresses on the person right or sitting in a car it doesn't matter because it's just adding a few more things in so the problem is not in having all this and not having all this is not going to solve your problem but if you have solved the problem without having any of this so having all these things are not any more a problem for one right so that is what is the intent so forget about all these worldly things right about great set of dresses or vehicles and the houses and the riches that you can have without all this even if you just have a loin cloth you still can be blessed you still can be happy and how is it that a person is being able to be happy without all this is what is addressed in this kopina vanchara so the first one 
ವೇದಾಂತ ವಾಕ್ಯು ಸದಾರಮಂತ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ಇ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ನವ ಡೇಸ್ ವಿ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಫೈಂಡ್ ಔಟ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಗುರು ಫಾರ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ದ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಗುರುಸ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಸಮ್ ಒನ್ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಣಾಯಾಮ ಸಮ್ ಒನ್ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಯೋಗ ಸಮ್ ಒನ್ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಎಲ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಹೌ ಡು ಐ ಈವನ್ ರೆಕಗ್ನೈಸ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಸನ್ the sadhu even if not a guru is a sadhu is a good sadhu right i need to know so the one qualification and the only qualification by which one starts looking for somebody for example is vedanta vakye shuramanam vedasya anta vedanta the ending portion of veda which we call as upanishad which is called as upanishad and it talks about the subject matter which is slightly different from the earlier portions of veda that's why we separate it as veda vedanta because the subject matter of this vedanta is brahma vastu the truth of the world the truth of oneself the truth of the god is what is revealed in these sentences vedanta vakya in which we also have these maha vakyas and these sentences in which the person is always dwelling always enjoying at ease with is at comfort with is always in consonance consonance with right sada ramantah ramate means the one who is enjoying who is relishing in it that's where the rama and all these words have come right ramante the one who is relishing in what vedanta vakyeshu so vedanta vakyeshu means vedanta vakyarteshu is how you have to get right not that repeating the sentences that you see that you see it's not that it is like what is the intent what is the vision provided by the vedanta is what is the focus of uh, uh, the person right and that is where the person is remaining um, engrossed in that is vedanta vakyeshu so there are two types of uh, sadhus that we speak about vidvat sanyasi vividisha sanyasi vidwan is one who already has this jnanam this uh, the vision is already there so the person is able to just relax in that jnana which is being provided by vedanta vakya then you have the vidvat san vid, uh, vividisha sanyasi the one who wants to know veditum icha vividisha so the one who wants to learn about it one who wants is on the pursuit so the person could be going through shravanam will may should may be going going for vedantic vision from a guru might be listening to it or might have listened and is doing mananam where the person is clarifying the inhibitions inhibitions which are coming up on this jnanam that is mananam or he is doing vididhyasanam or all three together so somebody who is still not a vidwan but is going through that Uh, pursuit is called a vividisha sanyasi so even that person focuses only on vedanta vakya the vedanta vakya is the source of all the whole pursuit so vedanta vakyeshu sadaramanta and that is the primary definition of a sadhu now if this is there then all the other things that he is going to describe in the next and including this verse next five verses is on the basis of vedanta vakya ramanam if one is in engrossed in vedanta vakya and dikshanna matrena cha tushti mantha the cha is there and a person is happy with whatever one gets any food that one gets right it's dikshanna matreshu tushti mantha dikshanna matrena tushti mantha the one who is happy with whatever one gets whether it is food or dress or shelter or whatever the person is just happy with what one gets right that is tushti mantha so the santosha tushti means santosha happiness one is happy is at peace with bikshanna matra just what one gets he is not going after things but he is ಅಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಎನಿ ಅದರ್ 
longing, right? Bikshanna matrena drishti mantra. The person is not, you know, in a state where one needs something for fulfillment, right? They don't, this person is not feeling short of anything because of the jnanam that one is a purna swarupa. There is no inhibitions in terms of I need this for me to be, I need this to be fulfilled for me to be complete, right? That sense of incompleteness doesn't exist. So because a sense of incompleteness doesn't exist, the person is happy with oneself, right? Vishokam antakkarane charantaha, without any unhappiness. How does unhappiness come? Unhappiness comes because one is not able to get something which one feels inadequate without having it, right? Or a person loses something again without which one feels incomplete, right? Or one gets something which one is not happy about, right? Which doesn't make one happy, right? So, or one doesn't get rid of something which they are not happy about, right? So, this is what is called Radha Dvesha, right? I, I'm trying to change my situations in a way that I can feel that, you know, I am at ease with things, right? And But though I keep changing the ecosystem around me to the extent it is possible, but despite all these changes, I still feel incomplete. So, that's the human predicament because you are not able to completely be at ease with oneself, right? So, and that is what keeps one in a state of shoka and running after things, right? So, vishokam antakkarane charantaha. But this person, because of the Vedanta Vakya Shravanam and Vedanta Vakya Ramanam, so one is complete, is not after things which will make him complete, him or her complete. So, Vishokam Antakkarane Charantaha Opi Inamanta Opi Kalu Bhagyavantaha. Even if that person is only having a lion cloth, they are indeed blessed. So, that's the first verse. The next verse, Shankara says, Moolam Taro Kevalamashrayantaha Panidvayam Bhoktumamantrayantaha Kantam iva srim api kutsayantaha Kopi navanta kalubhag yavantaha Mulam taroho kevalam ashrayantaha Ashrayanam means refuge Taroho kevalam a single tree Mulam ashrayantaha One who is sitting in the roots under a single tree. That's it. There is no roof over him or her. And the person is relaxed. He is happy. Right? So there is a story, right? When somebody is just, some sadhu is laying on the banks of of a river, Ganga. And a person comes and says, what are you doing here? I am just relaxing. Right? So, so this person says, yeah, I am just relaxing, I mean, I have nothing to do, so I am relaxing. So this guy who comes, he says, what is the use of, you know, just uh, doing this? You have to do some work. So don't just spend all this time lying on the banks of the river. And so he asks him, okay, that's good, so what are you doing? So he says, I am a farmer, so I just take care of, okay, so what do you do by doing this farming? He says, I will build a big house, okay, and then I just will get married, then you will get some kids, okay, good, and then I will keep earning, earning, I will give my kids all the wealth, right, and then I get them married off, right, and then I leave enough wealth for my wife and all that, okay, and then what? And then I will just lie down and I'll just relax that I've achieved everything in my life. I'm happy. I'll just be relaxed. So this sadhu says, whatever you are saying you will do after 25 years is what I'm doing today. I'm relaxed. I'm happy with what I have. Right? Do I need to go through all that to be happy? Which you say you would, but I get the same end goal without doing all those. Right? So that's what it is. 
So a person's happiness is not about what one has achieved as in the wealth acquired or getting the kids settled or whatever. Those needs to be done. I'm not dismissing that. But one's relaxation and peace is not about achieving that. See, the achievement of those gives you a certain peace because you are under pressure that without that you won't be complete. So that pressure gets released and you're happy, right? So the, it's not achievement of that, it's the removal of the pressure, right? It is anxiety of getting there is what is actually stopping you moving towards that completeness, right? Because you think you are incomplete without all that. So that self-judgment is where the problem is, right? The whole problem centers around one self-judgment, one's ability to understand one to one's true nature, right? And that is where the Ajnana, right? That Ajnana Nivritti is what happens through Vedanta Vakya and that Vedanta Vakya releases one's ignorance, one uh, from the ignorance and make one recognize the true self with this, which is Purnananda Swarupa, which we will see a little later. So, Mulam Taro Kevalam Ashrayanta Panidvayam Bhoktu Mamantrayanta Just to happy with a meager food which can be held in two, you know, arms. So one is not, you know, longing for tandoori dishes, right? That's not what, it's whatever keeps me filled is what I need, right? And so it's all about, you know, like Vivekananda, Swami Vivekananda says, what, how much ever Necessity becomes a luxury for you, the better, right? So something, if something is a necessity, that means you are bound. A cell phone is a necessity to me. It's no more a luxury. It used to be a luxury sometime back, but now it's a necessity, right? More it is a necessity, I cannot live without it. So a phone is a necessity, a television is a necessity, a computer is a necessity, a family is a necessity, right? So as and when I have so many of these necessities, it means I'm bound, I'm bound, without it, I'm fish out of time, water, right? So the more things which are necessity, are uh, move towards them becoming luxury, the better. That's what Swami Vedanta says, right? So it's, it's just the notion that I'm incomplete without all those, right? And a sense of inadequacy, right? With, the, with acquiring something is when I can be happy about. Without it, I'm limited. And that is what keeps the whole unhappiness going and a person always feels inadequate and there is a pressure to get something by hook or crook at many a times and that leads to guilt, that leads to hurt. That's the cause of the whole problem, right? And without all this, a person who is fulfilled, without achieving all these things, a person can become fulfilled by recognizing that the notion of limitation itself is false. Panidvayam bhoktu mamantrayanta kantamiva shrimati utsayanta kaupina vanta kalu bhagya vanta kantamiva shrimati utsayanta any luxury, right? any want is equivalent to something that I don't even need to have, right? A, a stone which I used to play earlier, right? A pebble, right? Where I used to play these pebbles in childhood. Now it's okay, I mean. I don't mind having it, but it's not that I feel incomplete without having it, right? But at one point in time, I needed to have it and I always used to count it. Do I have all the 10 that I started my day with, right? And each one is so important, right? So now I have grown out of the whole thing that I don't need that for me to be complete, right? That is the state of a sadhu. A person, that's why the person is not really worried about not having something. Then the third verse. Swananda bhave paritushti mantaha sushantasarvendriya vritti mantaha aharnisham brahma sukera mantaha kovina mantakkalu bhagya mantaha So if the person is not after any of these pursuits, then what is the person after, right? I mean, you have to have something in your mind. You just exist. It's not that you are a, you know, 
piece of log, a log of wood, right? That's not what you are. So one is a conscious person, that is life exists. So what is it that your mind is resting on, right? A sadhu's mind is resting on. Swananda bhave paritushtivantaha, swananda bhavaha. Swasurupa, what is my own true nature? What is it that I recognize as my I? Is this the limited person? Or is it an Ananta Swarupa, unlimited, uninhibited? So that uninhibited Swarupa, the one which is not bound by anything, either space nor time or the objects which are there, and every object, the space and time is nothing but this one Swarupa of myself. That Swananda, in that one is relishing. Swananda Bhave Paritushti Mantaha, Sushanta Sarvendriya Vritti Mantaha. All the senses are shantha, means what? So the senses have no problem. A sense always indriyani indriyarteshu vartante iti matva nasajyate Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavan says. So the indriya has to dwell in its own objects of experience, right? The eye has to see a form or a light. Ear has to hear sound, whether you are a jnani or not, right? There is no problem with Indriya. Indriya is always, they just do their job. So the problem is with the mind, right? the mind which is operating. It. it makes its own conclusions on the inputs received from the senses and the conclusions when they are centered on I and the way I relate to whatever I am sensing is where the problem is. Right? And if the mind is taken care by the Jnana, then the Indriyas are not a problem. They are Shanta. They are just doing their job. And I am not disturbed by seeing my mother-in-law. Right? So, Sushanta Sarvendriya Vritti Mantaha Ahar Nisham Brahma Sukhe Ramantaha Brahma Sukhe Ramantaha So, Swananda Bhave Parikrishta Mantaha Ahar Nisham Brahma Sukhe Ramantaha Both are kind of same. Brahma and Swananda are no different, right? Satyam Jnanam Anantam Brahma says Uparishad. Ananta Surupa, Anyati Surupa, one's own conscious awareness is nothing but the same Brahman. So the Brahma Sukhe Aharnisham Brahmantaha. There is no break as to when a person is dwelling on Brahman, right? Because Brahman being the Surupa, one's own self, there is no break in it. One is always engrossed in the Brahma Sukha. Kaupina Vanta Kalu Bhagya Vanta. Such a person who is engrossed in this Brahman, even if the person is having only Kaupina, they are indeed blessed. Deha di Bhavam Parivarta Yantaha Swapana Matmani Avaloka Yantaha Nantam na madhyam na bahismarantaha Kopi na vantakkalu bhagya vantaha Deha adi bhavam parivartayantaha Deha adi The body onwards Body etc. Body, mind, senses All this right emotions So from the body onwards So we start counting from body right My first conclusion about who I am is that I am this body. So it starts with that. And then I think I am this mind because that's where I identify myself, my emotions. Even my individuality is in terms of the mind. And then the senses, my prana, my breath, and the sense of I. So these are the things, right, on which I keep dwelling. Swatmanam Atmani Avalokayandaha, Atmani Swatmanam Avalokayandaha. In my own person, Sarupa is where the I sense is recognized. Right? The Brahma Sarupa is where the I is located. Nantam na madhyam na vaisparanta. So I don't look at spatial device. This is inside, this is outside. This is inside and outside and in between or notions of spatiality which is cognized by me. So, 
the spatiality rests on the cognition, on the awareness that my nature is. Before a time, after a time, ongoing time, all this are superimposed on my Sasurupa, which is Brahman. We will see all that in some of the other sessions. But here in Kaupina Panchagam, he says there is no recognition of Antam Madhyam Bahi. So the person is not worried about what is inside or outside or spatial device. So the person is completely engrossed in the Ananta Swarupa, such a person, Kaupina Vanta, Kalu Bhadya Vanta, even if the person is just having a loin cloth, is indeed blessed because he just has everything in the world. There is nothing which is separate from that person. There is nothing to be acquired. There is nothing which limits the person. So, the person is complete. The last verse, Brahmaaksharam Pavana Mucharantaha Brahma Hamasmiti Vibhavayantaha Dikshashino Dikshu Paribrahmantaha Kaukina Vantakalubhagyavantaha Brahmaaksharam Pavana Mucharantaha Brahmaaham Asmi इति विभावयन्तः विक्षा आशीनः दिक्षु परिभ्रमन्तः कौपीनवन्तः कलु भाग्यवन्तः This is the last verse. Aksharam Brahma Pavanam Charantaha The Aksharam which is Brahma The one that does not diminish Naksharati Aksharam Tad Brahma Pavana Mucharantaha, the one which is pure, that kind of a Swarupa is what one is deciding on. Brahma Hamasmiti Vibhavayantaha, the one who is always in the Bhava that Aham Brahma Asmi. So, whatever we discussed in the last verse, this is my Swarupa Iti Jnane. Bhavayantaha, one resides in that kind of bhavana. Vikshavasino, Dikshu Paribrahmantaha, the one who may, may be wandering freely, just eating whatever one gets, residing under a tree, but still, Kaupinavanto, Pikalu, Bhagyavantaha, one is blessed indeed, even without all these things. So that is how a sadhu life is. It's not Sotra, Sutyartha, not like it is being praised beyond what it is in reality, but it is how a life of Sadhu is. Some say all the entire life is a holiday for Swami. In that they used to say it's nothing binds the person, the person is completely free because of this Vedanta jnana and that kind of uh, Life is what a sadhu life, and in this occasion of Astaradana of Puja Swamiji, we thought it apt to actually spend some time on these five verses called Sadhana Vanchak, Kaupina Vanchakam, and uh, so that we can pay our obeisance to Puja Swamiji. Naguro Radhikam Tattvam Naguro Radhikam Tapaha Guru of Paradaram Nasti Tasmishri Gurave Namaha Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamada Chale Purnasya Purnamada Ajapurnameva Vasishade Om Shanti 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 Arihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Arihi Om